Hello everyone and welcome to Fire Emblem Gaiden on the NES. This is one that I don't see a lot of people talk about unless you're someone like me, in which case you never shut up about Gaiden. I really like Gaiden. I didn't expect myself to like this one because I'm not a huge fan of FE1, but I really, really enjoy Gaiden and a lot of what Gaiden has to bring to the table. So I think with that, well, you've, you've all played Shadows of Valencia at this point, so you already know most of the story, and this is really everything that is explained in Shadows of Valencia. So I think we're going to go ahead and jump right in. Now, uh, we are going to be playing the easy mode, because it doubles EXP gain, and EXP is kind of pitiful in this game. So if you hold select, start, pick a new game, you can do easy mode. This really, the biggest difference is that it doubles EXP, and it allows you to trade items between the armies indefinitely, but I'm mostly doing it just for the double EXP, because otherwise you have to grind a lot to get even just a half dozen units up to decent levels to do everything. Now because this game can also be a little slow in some other ways, I'm probably going to be doing most of the enemy phases in fast forwards, because the enemy phase moves pretty, pretty, pretty slow. So I'll be doing that for most of the enemy phases. I'll probably forget to fast forward some of them, but I'm sure I'll remember at some points. Here we have our friends. Now they look pretty different if you've only played Shadows of Valencia. These guys look pretty different than their normal counter than their uh, SOB versions. Right, here we go. This this is it. Just get to jump right in. We got Alm to start off. We got Luca. I really like the portrait work in this game. I don't really like it. I don't really like a lot of portraits in FE1, but I really like Guidance portraits. Look at this guy. Look at how smug he is. We have Robin and Cliff. Oh, we need to feed some levels. Also, this purple up here is a supply tile. So it gives you HP and a void for standing on it. Now, just like FE1, you have to select a unit and then press a direction to let you move. Now, while you can't view like enemy ranges, since movement is so simple in this game, you can see they have four moves. So one, two, three, four. Uh, you need XP the most. One, two, three, four. Also, I'm realizing you guys are probably going to be able to pick up my keyboard. This is my first time using a keyboard to record Fire Emblem stuff. One, two, three, four, attack. Oh, I kind of moved one space closer. So, sorry if there's any clicky clacky in the background, but I don't know. Maybe some people like the sound of that. So look at that, 2 EXP for chipping, or 2 team EXP and then 10 for chipping. Now once this, you especially get to like the zombies in the caves, those barely give you any as well. There we go. Now, something this game introduced... Can I reach? One, two, three, four. Oh no, we can't, that's so depressing. 10 HP... We're just gonna let Cliff go to town on this guy. Oh. Okay. So nothing happened. Oh, something this game has is if you press the B button, it cycles between your units you haven't moved yet. Just a wonderful little quality of life that I'm so happy exists. I'm gonna set you back here. Have We're actually gonna let you take the forest. I don't think he doubles. I probably should have checked. Oh, he does. Easy. So we gotta give you, I believe, one level. And we have to give um, Cliff two levels so we can get them promoted. Now this game is kind of 
funnily infamous for its heal AI where the enemy, if it gets to below a certain amount, they will forego pretty much everything and just run around and just run to the heal tiles. That'll soften you up enough to feed Robin the kill. Also, that Group EXP at the bottom. That functions just like the Group EXP in SOV, where it pools all of it together, and at the very end of a map, well, this is why we chipped, it'll deal it out to everyone. And just like an SOV, it cannot put you over a level. So I definitely recommend Anyone who's close to getting a level up, I recommend getting it before the map ends. Also, Robin can be promoted. To the XP, to the XP. We'll have you chip him. We do have a couple of other maps before we get to the Mela statue to promote anyways. So we don't have to be too fast about it. They don't know what to do, so they're just gonna kind of vibe here for now. Swing at you. Oh my goodness. Uh, we'll have Lucas finish one of them off. And then we'll have Cliff 1v1 the other one. Or we can feed that one to Cliff. I like that idea more. Hmm. I guess since his heal point's blocked, they decided, eh, why not? Go for the weak kid. Now, can we feed this other thief to Cliff? He doubles now. They got the point of speed. Look at him go. Easy map. I don't have any items. I do want to make sure that we save the game. And then we'll go do another map. Now Marth's starting, or Alm starting all the way back over here. go to town on these guys. Okay, you just need to do any kind of chip damage. Gray. We also have to wait here. I think I want to put you here. Block the archer from taking the forest. We're getting a lot of high percentage misses. We'll have you vibe here. Now, I'm sure if you've looked at the menu that pops up, some of you might have seen two very interesting and fun options. See, I already forgot that I was going to do these fast forward. Oh, nice crit! I don't mind feeding Alms some kills. And he did it. He can promote. Oh, we gave him a forest anyways. This game has auto battle. It's a pretty primitive auto battle, but it's a thing. So you can use assault, you can use gather. And that's it. Now we have to try to hit this guy on a forest. Okay. 
Also, the way Archer's range works is a little bizarre. I believe it's... Archers have... Uh, archers have... One... Uh, one three range, and bows give them one five range. I believe that's how it works. Strength, HP. Also, this game has a courtesy to give you at least one HP if it rolls a blank level up. So you'll know you'll always get at least one stat whenever you level up, even if it's just HP. Why don't we see who the game picks out to be the recipient of this kill? Also, if you select the auto battle, there isn't really a way to cancel as far as I know, so you kind of just have to roll with it. And I believe it moves your allies in the order they show in the unit screen. There's no kind of strategy behind who moves when. I think that needs to kind of run forward. Oh, now we're going to give the guy the forest. Now he has the forest. Now I don't really know what classes I want to make these guys yet. I kind of haven't gotten that far yet. I do have an idea. Now we have to deal with guide the void tiles. Try to think about this strategically, think about a way to bait him off of the tile, or I can just throw myself at him over and over again until enough 50% hit. Also, um, since the weapons, your base weapons don't have any stats, you can very easily see power 7, Versus two defense, so we do five damage. And we have three speed on there. Two speed, so we double. That alone is one of my favorite things this game does, especially compared to FE1, is it makes calculating stats, damages, so much easier. with 1 HP. Yeah. Yeah, we'll let you swing at this guy. Oh. <laughs> we'll get him someday. I know, I think that top guy's gonna go into heal AI. Good level up. Yep. There's one HP. Who do I want to bonk him with? You have enough HP to take on the boss. So we we'll move you up. Oh, just HP. Lucas swing at this guy first. Since he has decent defense, he can take the counter. Look at that. And we'll feed this guy to all. I think some of what I like about Gaiden is that it's so chill. It's 
just, it feels very similar to um, SOV's normal mode, which is also kind of pretty chill difficulty. So I think that's why I kind of enjoy Gaiden from time to time is you just kind of throw it on. Kind of put some effort into it, but you don't feel like you're straining yourself to play it. You can very easily play through most of the game without having to do a lot of number crunching. You can usually look at an enemy and go, yeah, I'm pretty much going to be fine here. I feel like this is going to be fine. And I think I want to feed that to Lucas. Also, I like the victory music that plays. There we go. Very nice, very nice. So he gets his level up, and he gets the team EXP. Let's go inside the beef shrine. Hey everyone, wanted to throw up a real quick flashing lights warning. Throughout the playthrough, anytime you're in a dungeon and you screen transition and there's a random encounter in the way, there's going to be a lot of white flashing lights. If that's going to be an issue, I highly recommend looking away for a sec until you hear the music either slow down for a sec for the screen transition, or if you hear the combat music start playing, then it's safe to look back. Now the dungeons are much, much simpler than an SMB. Oh my gosh, that flashes a lot. I'm going to have to throw up some kind of warning about that, I think. Hopefully I actually remember to throw the warning up too. And just, don't just tell me something to do it. One, two, three, four. Go. Okay, we can go here then. Pull them all in. Then we'll give him the option to go for Lucas too. Let's see. You're one point away. One, two, three, four. Attack. Well, maybe just enemy phase one of these guys real quick. Get that little bit of EXP to get you to another level up. You're pretty close to a level up too. But I think we'll just feed most of these to Alma and Lucas. And in the future, if I ever have to backtrack somewhere for any reason, I'm probably gonna cut most of it out. Just so you don't have to watch me blast through Thieves Shrine over and over again to promote people. Deal with this guy. Look at him taking one damage. I love Lu using Lucas. This guy's so cool. You guys has the highest HP. I think all of you have the same. Yeah. Let's attack this guy and see what happens. I mean, they're all gonna end up dead anyways. Oh, that's right. They want to heal. Go manually take him down. But hey, it means we need to listen to the cool music again. You'll definitely see in this place that there are a lot fewer weapons in this game compared to SOV. Go up here. Get our new friend. Look how cute this portrait is. Look at her. She's so precious. Now let's do some promoting. Oh, here's the fun part about promoting. Uh, maybe, maybe I just do the first class that pops up for everyone, but no duplicates. 
Maybe that's what we'll do. Sure. So whatever the first class to pop up is, that's what we'll do. But no duplicates. Okay, you're an archer. Come on. Sure. I think that's their SOV classes that the game kind of pushes you towards in the overworld. But hey, that's what we got now. Uh, speed. Now, if I'm remembering correctly, Nosferatu weighs three. So I'm going to give a point of speed to Silk. I'm going to give another one to Silk. And let me double check myself on how heavy Nosferatu is, because that will change something. V2. Nosferatu weighs two. So if we double check the units. She's going to have four speed with it. I think that's enough for what I want to do. I don't think this one's anything important. Yeah, HP. I don't think I need to give her that last point of speed. Let's go do that, do that. Let me just double check one quick thing again. Because I, I don't remember if I need to save a point of speed for something to do a really funny thing. Um... Where is it? There it is. Okay, we'll save that one speed fountain then, because I think I have to save it for something. But giving it to Silk would be way more fun, though. Yes, we'll give it to Silk then. Silk speed rose. Because now, she for sure doubles pretty much every enemy in the upcoming map. Except for the mercenary. Oops. Yes, enter the big woods. Um. I think that'll be it for now. We did three whole maps. But that'll be it. Um, this will kind of go up alongside the FE6 playthrough. Just something a little bit more chill and relaxing than the chaos of FE6 and units dying a lot. So feel free to tune in next time and check out the other series too. Uh, if you enjoyed yourself, make sure you like the video, uh, comment your favorite part, and subscribe if you want to see the next part of why you should play Gaiden. See ya!